He's like he's right. He's right here by the Aretta. Uh, that, the Aretta entrance behind us. We're in the middle of point. Yeah. 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 These John Marshall students may look like they are just sitting in front of a computer playing a video game, but they are doing so much more. Uh, they're coming from the right, 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 guys, right. But when you have like an actual team put together, that helps because you can work together. You can make call outs such as, can you go this way while I go this way? And you can surround people easier and get the point. And that helps you win more games. Good morning. They are honing their skills in the areas of communication, hand-eye coordination, and reaction time to win games for their electronic or esports team. Use his uh, heel thing like six times. They will have the chance to compete against more than a dozen high schools across the district when the Senate League launches esports. It's nice to see the dream start small and grow to what it is today. I'm just so glad to see um, all the other schools getting behind it. And the, of course, Eric Gordon and everyone really showing their support for um, esports. I'm excited and pumped. I've been waiting to do something like this for a while. Esports has become a game changer for students who don't have the physique or desire to play traditional sports like football or basketball. Um, it's, it has nothing to do with your DNA, really. It's just whether you can devote their time and effort into learning a new skill in a game. At Digital Arts, the esports team is divided into groups and practicing different video games that are all rated T for teen. Some have virtual coaches. Though I play these games, I'm still not like a master level competitor. So having these coaches that really know the nitty gritty of the games, they're going over everything from like what settings our players will probably want to use so that they can find their comfort zone. And then talking about, you know, the big picture strategies and the little details of how they can improve. While they may not be running a ball up and down a field, these students are going through training. Then the other half of our time is a lot about looking at how you've played in the past, things that you know you need to work on, and spending time just focusing on, you know, a specific skill. Like, you know, you find a weakness or something that you know will improve your gameplay, and then you just train on that for a little while so that when you get into a real game, you're not thinking too hard about it, you've developed the muscle memory, and now you know how to react or how to pull off this combo or whatever that thing is that you've been working at. And for some of the teams in CMSD, not only will they be competing with other teams across the district, they'll be competing with teams across the state. One of the great things about Esports Ohio is uh, there's a lot of eyes looking at it. There's a lot of college recruiters that are looking at the Esports Ohio's matches, their live streams, uh, their semifinals and finals are actually like held in esports arenas. A lot of them are college arenas. So if you're playing in that arena, you're going to be noticed by the college teams. Whoa. Opportunities these students can now score big with, with their education, and it motivates some to do well in their classes. There's so many scholarships out there now. They realized, wow, I can do this at college. I wasn't even thinking about going to college. The first exhibition will be against Ginn Academy, John Marshall, and the digital arts teams, and they are ready to compete. Playing video games since I came out the womb. Oh, I'm definitely excited. This, this is, I want to, I'm normally just one of those people who just, I, I'm good at gaming and I know what I'm doing, but it's good to see what, how far I've gotten with gaming to see if I, if I can beat everyone else. Okay. Yeah. Are you 